why is it that there are just so many different drill bit designs? I mean, why can't we just keep things simple and everyone in the world agree just to stick to Phillips heads? I mean, surely this is a conspiracy by big drillings to force everyone to buy more bits and more screws just so they can line their pockets. Well, <clears throat> that is what I thought until I actually decided to do a little bit of research into this. And it turns out that there actually is a very good reason as for why there is such a wide variety of different screwdriver bits to choose from. And in the majority of cases, it comes down to manufacturing cost or cost versus the likelihood that the screw or the screwdriver bit is going to get damaged. And specifically, when I, when I talk about damage, I'm referring to two main things. So the first being stripping, and this is the case where the screwdriver bit may go into it and then too much torque or spinny force is applied, into which case the little grooves inside of the screw that are eroded away and then you can no longer spin it. Or the other bit of common damage that can happen is camming out, where it's basically the same problem, except instead of this, the grooves in the screw giving way, uh, the actual notches on the screwdriver bit itself actually get eroded away and then the screwdriver bit becomes useless. And so today I'm going to be talking specifically about seven different types of screwdriver bits. And six of the seven that I'll be talking about actually fit perfectly into this ratio of cost versus the likelihood of damage. And also note that all of these screw types that I'm talking about come in a variety of sizes. And so take this 100 piece screwdriver set for example. I think this is pretty intimidating. I'm going a hundred different types of screw types. But when you actually look at this in a bit more detail, you find that this is just a, a handful of designs that are just copied for different sizes. And so specifically, the screwdriver bits that I'm going to be talking about is one, the flathead, two, the Phillips head, three, the posi drive, uh, four, the Torx, uh, five, the hex, otherwise known as the Allen key, six, the Robertson, and then for seven, it's not just one type of screw, but it's a whole bunch of screws, and they're called security screws. And so I'll explain the pros and cons of each of these styles uh, starting right now. So one, flatheads. These are an essential part of any tool kit, but not for actually using on screws because they just slip out all the time. I only say that they're an essential part of every tool kit because they're great for prying things open like paint tins. I'll now move on to Phillips heads. And so this is the most common screwdriver bit type that you'll find. And one great thing about them is that you can quite often get away with using the wrong size screwdriver bit for the screw. And as they're pretty much everywhere and they're cheap, that's a very practical option. However, with the Phillips head, the major drawback is, is that these are the types of screws that are most likely to strip or to have the screwdriver bit cam out. And so with that, we'll move on to the next one being the posi drive. And so the posi drive is basically just a new and approved Phillips head, where you have the original four grooves, but then it just has some additional little mini grooves in there just to provide that little bit more grip so it can survive a bit more of that torque force. And another great thing about posi drive is that you can still use a Phillips head if you don't happen to have a posi drive screwdriver bit on hand. And so it's less likely to strip and cam out and it's actually super convenient which is why the posi drive is a very popular choice. And so now we'll move on to number four, the Torx. And so this kind of uses the same concept as a posi drive except instead of having little half grooves it just has a fixed proper grooves. But despite its very good grip, unfortunately these are pretty rare to find and you won't find them in most people's tool bags. And so that is the big drawback about this. So super strength, pretty expensive to manufacture, but not that common out in the real world. Now as far as the screwdriver bits that have grooves, uh, this is pretty much all the designs. And now we're switching over to a different way of gripping. Yeah, where it basically uses edges rather than straight line grooves. And that moves us to the first one where it uses edges and that being the hex key, or as it's more commonly known, the Allen key. And so obviously the upside about this is that it's far less likely to cam or strip. But the downside about this, however, is that if you're caught without the perfect size bit for it, you will not be able to basically turn it at all. Now, given that the hex key is such a common design and it's such a common thing out there, there are many kits where you, you can sort of get little packs and they have all the hex sizes all together. So you are pretty unlikely to be caught out with the wrong size, which is why the hex key is such a popular choice. Uh, anyone that's put together a bit of IKEA furniture would know this. So, and now we'll move on to the second last one, and this is also my personal favorite, and this is the square screwdriver bit, or otherwise known as the Robertson bit. Now, the reason why I love this one is that it's a very good design, and it is incredibly hard to cam or strip. In fact, I've never actually personally done it, even though this is my screw of choice. Now, the, the grip is so strong with this that I've actually managed to apply enough torque force to actually snap the screw in the middle through torque force without having any damage to the connection point here. 
So that is just a real testimony as to how strong this design is. And I could continue to rant and rave about how great these are, but I do need to move on to the last type of screw types, and well, this is actually a few. And this being number seven, and this is clutch heads, tri wings, and other security screws. And so these don't really fall into the likelihood of damage versus cost ratio, and they more are designed the way they are for a whole different set of reasons. And that is, is that they perhaps they want to be difficult to use if you don't have the perfect screwdriver bit. And so this is used by professionals that may want to make a point of people not tampering with their work after they've done with it. And there's a countless variety of security screws that may be specific to an individual company or an individual trade that no one else can access uh, for the exact reason that they don't want anyone else having the capability of being able to open whatever that screw is holding close. And so that's it. And I really hope you found this video useful. If you think I've missed anything or you think there's anything I should add in, uh, please mention in the comments that we're all on a learning journey, including myself. And I think the more we can all learn from each other, the better. Anyway, as per usual, thanks for watching.